Well, hello, time for our Q&A, 118, I think it is, and we love these Q&A, so keep the questions coming and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, Frank Malena, uh, did you sleep well, and did Davy fix his water pressure situation with his neighbor when we went camping with Davy up in, uh, up at his campsite? And we did sleep, actually sleep well. Yeah. Um... I was surprised the bed was actually really nice. Dave, April actually likes the bed in the guest camper more than she likes the one in their camper. And um, the, the water pressure thing, Davy says the guy just is letting him use the water, but he doesn't know if he's going to go weird again it's actually, or not. Well, if that, the water company couldn't help him negotiate with the guy, so he said, uh, he just left it on, so just go ahead and use it. Yeah, just use it till, because Davy tried to reason with the guy. He says, "I'll pay you," but the guy just told him to go away. No, and... he, he was the helper guy. The oh, it was a helper guy. guy. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. And it, we really had a lot of fun <coughs> up camping. It it was it was really fun, and uh, uh, the camp guest camper was really nice. We actually spent more time in there than we did in the other camper because. Uh, the guest camper has a, a thing that slides out and so it gives you more room in the living room there. So it was it was really fun. Davy slept the in. guest one. The guest camper's one we slept in. Oh okay, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh uh we had fun and I actually got on the motorcycle and <laughs> thought for sure I was gonna tip over. <laughs> okay. Um Kimberly Niven. Are both campers Davy and April's or is one yours? Look like looks like a lot of fun. Looks Looked like a fun camping spot with the open space for the bikes and the rock climbing. Yeah, both campers are Davies. He he has has the one that's a toy hauler, so he can load his motorcycles up in his uh, Polaris and Polaris is kind of like yeah, a side by side four wheeler or four wheeler mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. roll bars and everything yeah. and, and he thought boy it'd be since none of us have campers in the family or uh, a lot of his friends and stuff he says i'll just get this guest camper it's an old old one 25 years old or something and so he got a really good price on it and that's his guest camper and so that so both of those are his but it doesn't uh, have a any wear looking at it inside. Oh, it looks it look, really it looks nice. New. <laughs> Maybe they used it once a year, so that means yeah. they used it 25 times. <laughs> so that that's a really good question. Okay, do you want to read the next one? Did Papa just, all, Oh, just Francine. Just Francine. <laughs> um, did Papa O have a good life growing up? Uh, a lot of times when you grow up, it's like the old saying goes, you don't know you're poor in until somebody tells you. Mm -hmm. you That's how it was with me. I thought thought we were doing great, you know, as long as you have food in your belly. And then people say, oh, you were poor. I go, oh, I was? Oh. I would say it was kind of in the middle. Uh, my parents both ran away from home to get married in Las Vegas. They hitchhiked from Alberta. Las Vegas <clears throat> and then they came back and their own parents on the on my father's side they divorced and so we had a so my mom and dad after returning they had twins and one died and they headed back headed to Vancouver uh, and that's where I was born so that twins before you oh yeah yeah they had twins before me yeah I guess I thought I had a normal childhood, like my father didn't beat me, and <clears throat> we had, <clears throat> of course, there are a lot of signs that we were poor, but I didn't realize it till mm -hmm. later, like, I remember after the divorce, my mom would send me to school with two sandwiches. One was a carrot sandwich between two slices mm -hmm. of white bread, and the yeah. other one was kind of a dessert sandwich and that was sugar on it <laughs> and I enjoyed it and it, I didn't realize that maybe some of the other kids had a better lunch. So you weren't ashamed of it? You oh just no. Said, you said yeah, yeah this is great. Um, yeah. Then I heard we we're moving down to the United States to live with my grandmother. After your divo the yeah. divorce. And she didn't have a husband. He had died of a heart attack and uh, 
Your grandpa. My grandpa. So I guess... Well, you had fun out in the forest with Colin, your brother. Okay. <coughs> well, nobody understands that fun. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tell them what fun you had. <coughs> we each had, at, a, at about six to seven years old, we each had hatchets because we lived in the middle. That's like Ender's age. I didn't know. Well, let's say we took the hatchets because we were constantly, uh, it was the middle of a kind of, if you look at pictures of British Columbia, some are giant trees with ferns and moss because it rains, it rains a lot. And ours is more of a kind of a small forest and, and a brush, lots of, lots of brush and dirt, dirt streets and uh, that was normal to me. So to play in the play in the trees meant we were constantly cutting down uh, and making small forts mm -hmm. for us to. And you loved that. In. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I really did. And <clears throat> sometimes we'd go to the little little streams that that led into the Fraser River, and the streams were fun because you could follow the stream, mm -hmm. and there's clay along the side and. Sometimes we'd use the clay to, to patch up our forts that we would build, and so that was, I enjoyed that, and it was a lot of fun. And that was up to age seven? No, I came down to the United States when I was nine. Oh, nine, okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the parents, one was Catholic, one was Mormon, and they argued over religion, what, ch what religion mm -hmm. my brother and I would belong to, and it ended up serious enough yeah. so they didn't want to stay married any longer. Mm. And uh, my mother got remarried to a, a Mormon, and things started looking really good after mm -hmm. that. And that's where you ended up, United States, no, California, United States of California, and then? Well, then we, um, my, my grandma went to a Oracle family reunion and saw a man that was single and in mm -hmm. his early 30s or late 20s, I think early 30s, yeah. And uh, she kind of, in her mind, I thought, this is a really nice person, so so we invited him down and hit, they hit it off. He hit it off with my mother, and mm -hmm. uh, they arranged to get married. And so me and my mother headed from uh, California, which is by Inglewood, Southern California, mm -hmm. headed from there up to Salt Lake City, Utah, and he worked in the Kennecott Copper, which is the largest copper mine in the world, and, and uh, he was. He was just a very kind person, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed being around him. And that's the one we knew. I met Joe's dad, Wallace Chuck, Ralph Wallace Chuck, twice, twice, and I, I liked him. And and Gene's the one that my kids, our kids knew, uh, growing up, because he was just five minutes away. He'd stop by every single day. Right? Yeah. And what's the rest of her question there? I guess that's about it. Um, oh. We always learned bits and pieces of his life, but never asked if he enjoyed it. I, I would say, with my real father, I didn't enjoy it because he was a disciplinarian, and he made it so I was always worried about him getting mad at me. Mm -hmm. He didn't hit me. Uh, slap now and then, but, and, but no hits. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he kind of get a stick and uh, hit, whip you on your knees? Well, I don't know. Well, he'd, we'd walk in front of him, and oh. my brother and I. <laughs> so that more. And I can't, I can't remember if it was <sighs> there we go. to be just to be cute or <laughs> he wanted us to stay in line. Yeah. And in those days, all, of, all well, in Canada, all boys wore sharp pants. Yeah. So he just kind of whack us a little. <laughs> he just whack I have more pleasant. Little willow stick. I have more pleasant and good memories with my mom's second marriage mm -hmm. than I do with my real father. But Jean, Jean Orton. I wasn't, but I loved him, but it's just, yeah. He, in my opinion, he was strict and kind of mean all the time, yeah, but it, not mean like hitting, just a slap at Just keeping it stern, yeah. yeah. And his name was Ralph Wallace Chuck, and then Joe, this, the, the one that Maureen got married to, sealed to in the temple, Eugene Orgill, and he they were fifth cousins, so Joe took on the Orgill name and dropped the Wallace Chuck. Wallace Chuck was from, uh, as a Polish name, it was spelled different, and uh, we would have mo been Wallace most Chucks. <laughs> <laughs> and my, our kids, and the name was spelled with a Z, and you know, oh. 
<clears throat> and they they changed the spelling because it was so hard to yeah. spell. And I took so long to explain my name. I said, now oh. what is your last name? Wallace Chuck? Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that two names? Yeah. No, I, in my own mind, I, wa I, I thought it would be easier to ex explain. No, I was Wallace Chuck right up mm -hmm. to living in Utah. Mm. It's when we moved to Utah we changed it. Oh, to so, Oregon. Yeah. Huh, okay. and, and I, I changed it to his name just because it was my mom's maiden name mm -hmm. and it made it simpler for introducing my, my yeah. myself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it also says, did you raise your kids the way in which you two were raised or did you do it differently? Oh, good question. Let's see. Uh, where is it? Say? The same, uh, just <coughs> Francine wants to know this. Oh. Really good deep questions here. I think everybody, um, especially the fathers, mimic a little bit the way their own father was. If well, he had strict rules, then usually the when he has children, he'll, <laughs> he'll kind of have strict yeah. rules. Well, we, we actually raised him different uh, because spanking was very common when I was growing up and when Papa was growing up. And we we were starting, we, we started out spanking, and then I decided that it, that wasn't a good idea. And uh, uh, we decided, let's, let's only spank if they're doing something dangerous, and, and don't, don't go more than three spanks, because you get out of control and it becomes abusive. And so our rule was, if they're gonna run across the street without looking, then they get three swats on the bum and you keep it soft, you don't leave a mark, you know, or uh, or if they're throwing rocks at each other, or they've got knives coming at each other, you know, where they're gonna, life I, is threatened. I say where they're endangering yeah. other people. Yeah, where it's some kind of endangerment. Because the pain of a spanking is better than the pain of getting hit by a car or the pain getting hit with a rock or stabbed by a knife. Because um, pain is there for a reason and that pain is to stop them from doing something that will hurt hurt themselves. And then something like they spill their milk, you're not going to spank them for that. You can't just spank for everything. You got to make the um, crime, punishment fit the crime. Like if you spill your milk, give them a rag to clean it up. Yeah. If they color on the wall, have them clean it up. If they hit their brother, then uh, they've got to do something to make if they make their brother or sister cry, they've got to do something to make them happy. Actually, it's funny because the first child, you have a lot of perfection ideals. Mm -hmm. You want you want everything to be perfect, so you tend to punish more mm -hmm. and be more strict. That poor first kid, they're your guinea pig. Yeah, and by the time, by the time the last one comes about, if she unrolls a whole roll of toilet paper on the <laughs> floor, you say, uh, "Go get the camera." <laughs> no, yeah, the first child, uh, the he unrolls the toilet paper. He says, "You, you're you're grounded for ten thousand years. You know, clean this up. You know." And this second child unrolls the toilet roll of toilet paper, and you you say, "Oh, good, it's keeping him busy. He's happy." It's, what does toilet paper cost? Thirty cents. Let him go for it. And then the fourth, third child comes along, and you get the camera out and take pictures. That's kind of <laughs> you a, think, how cute. Uh, a parent joke, uh, <laughs> inside joke. They so, come so you just kind of. You hit. I can't get down there. Oh, there you go. Oh, there. I started much. slouching. I, yeah, you started I was slouching. And I'm trying to get down there. Okay, and and so that that was different. So we, uh, I think the next generation, each generation does things a little bit different. Because I remember. Uh, your dad used to say a child is to be seen not heard and they wouldn't even let kids that, talk. That was the generation of my mother yeah. and my father. And then your our generation comes along and we did a lot of spanking. And, it, and in their own homes yeah. they'd say children should be seen and not heard. And then uh, the next generation comes along and I don't even know if they even spank. Uh, they find, you know, we never did grounding. I don't believe you in grounding. You can have grounding. your children, today you can have your children taken away from the child abuse. <laughs> That's true. No, uh, yeah, it, you just, spanking now, just, uh, you know, if you're doing that, then 
uh, it gets a little out of control. People start beating their kids and you can get angrier and angrier. The more you hit, the more angry you get. So you, there's other tactics of, okay, you'll be in your room for two hours or you get some extra well, chores. That's what or, one of our children does. They, mm -hmm. they do privileges are taken yeah, away. Yeah, privilege. David and April do privileges. Or, you think of a different way. You have to have some kind of leverage so that you have power. And I'll post where how we raised our children. Um, I have a book on it and I kind of do a, a drawing, uh, draw my, draw how we raised our children. And I actually got ideas from other successful mothers that uh, I believed that they had raised successful f families and I asked them, well, what did you do for chores? What did you do about grounding? What did you do about spanking? What do you do to punish? What do you do to reward? And I got a lot of really good ideas and raised my ch our children that way and got Joe on board with it and uh, Papa O on board with it. And we get, got the kids together. We wrote up 10, 10 rules. God, God gives us 10 com commandments, so I thought 10 rules for our family would be a good idea and the punishment, the consequence of each rule and um and we i we didn't do uh, allowance allowance so. thank you we didn't do allowance because i just we just didn't believe in that um i fe i felt like they should be doing clean their room because they're part of the family why should they be paid for that or why should they be paid for their grades uh why should they be paid for um you know, doing their weekly chores. I, I just, we and just didn't believe in that. they wanted spending money, we yeah. found ways for mm -hmm. them to earn money. There is a way to get the money. We put them financially on their own by age eight. I got that from the Osmond's yeah, mother. Yeah, be careful about how you say that because you get a lot, you get <laughs> well, a lot we, of flat. Yeah, clothes. we provide the house, the food, and they, they just, you know, pretty much buy their clothes no, or she, their No, sports. she means that if you want extra stuff. Extra, yeah. Uh, like you want a game or something. And so we, we or like they did paper. We did paper routes for mm -hmm. the kids for ten years. Eighteen, eighteen, 18 years, years. We did the paper route and, once a week. And we gave, and we had a lot of different ways t from companies mm -hmm. to work at home for the children. Mm -hmm. So when we say we did different jobs, when Roseanne says they're on their own at eight years old, we, uh, I don't like that phrase myself because it, financially, no, it own, still yeah. gives them a the wrong idea that because no child. That's could, why you got to read my book. <clears throat> <laughs> I have. I, I I edited it. Remember? Well, I mean them, not you. I know you read. You he read it through three times, editing it for a me. A lot more than that, but at least three times, at least. And uh, it just seemed to work good. It teaches them how. Well, see, the, how it, to spend here, their money. Them. <clears throat> All of our children ended up going in business for themselves, like wedding videos. Mm -hmm. That was two of them. Johnny. It's kind of funny how Johnny they and Davey. how they all. <laughs> His hand gets real big. How uh, how they're all Julianne did sewing do and she ended business. up buy, buying a business and and mm -hmm. has it to this day. Upholstery and yeah, uh, wedding videos, uh, YouTube videos. And Amanda um, restores old furniture yeah, for money. They all have so the end. Of, so I think mm -hmm. that saying "be on your mm -hmm. own" at a young age means find you find a way to earn well, money. Well, it's better for them to learn at a young age what happens to their money. Like, let's say they get their first six dollars, they spend it all on candy. You think, well, mom, I need some pants or a shirt or something. I say, well, you spend it all on candy. Just wear your old stuff that you've got. And then, uh, like, if it's your money, they can spend that ten dollars pretty quick. If it's their money, boy, they, I, I can they're spend so their ten dollars. Yeah, pretty, pretty yeah. quick. But boy, they spend their own money. It, they're more a lot more careful. They learn how to pay their tithing. They learn how to uh, be, you know, know how to manage their money. And then if they were a cheerleader or on baseball or football or whatever, it says you get your own uniform. You've got to earn your own way to to go to that choir concert. And I, of course, I would help them do fundraisers. Like we'd bake bread on Father's Day. We'd bake pies and pizzas, and they'd have to find the customers. And I would, I would bake the stuff for them. Then they, they would deliver it. So it worked out good. Uh, I didn't go into a lot of detail with that, but um, you'll see more on my video up here. Okay. Well, let's do one more. Uh, Kathy Conley, I love the video of you and your sister singing. Uh, do you have more of you guys singing? singing like that together if you do make if you do maybe you can upload more videos of you guys together and uh i do have some of us singing together i just got to go find them and i'll do that i'll 
Uh, that's when I posted a video of 1982 when we were all singing on the Eugene Jelesnik show. One of the sisters is missing. She was in, lived in Idaho and couldn't get down there in time. So there's actually seven of the girls. But um, we enjoy singing together. It's just hard to get together. But <clears throat> I will say one thing that she's talking about when you were younger, because we, our own family, we started, our children mm -hmm. started singing together. So most of our, all of our married life, uh, our kids are singing on mm -hmm. stage. Yeah, the Orgel family singers and cloggers. And, and me and the sisters would get together and I'll just dig through some of my old videos and see if we have any of us singing together. But that was a lot of fun. Thanks for your questions and keep them coming. And we'll end with a couple of quotes. Let's see. Um, this is an unknown uh, author, author, quote, personer. Let go of the thoughts that don't make you strong. Okay, I'm going to change that one <clears throat> on my own. Let go of the thoughts that drag you down and I make like you that. unhappy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't make you stronger, they make you weaker. Let go of those thoughts. Yeah. Because I remember <clears throat> when I was being made fun of when I was younger, and if somebody would say one thing to me, they would say it once. And then me, I would repeat it over and over in my head. And they only said it to me once, but I'm the one that continued it on. Yeah. Why did I do that? I said, oh, they said this, and I'd repeat it in my head over and over. So I'm actually the one that um, made fun of myself. Okay. And so you have to be careful about that. That's a good thought. Here's a good Charlie Chaplin. <coughs> Only the really old folks know him. <laughs> he said, you'll never find a rainbow if you're looking down. That's true. It's kind of like my look for the rose, where you're yeah. looking down. you got to pull your head up, yep. look for the rose, look for the rainbow. Um, look up and that that makes you feel more powerful not that far up <laughs> makes you feel more powerful more confident and I even say when you're walking down the street um, you know keep your head up and, and be aware of what's going on around you and and people are more apt to look on you as a stronger person than a weak person if you're looking down and, and if you're looking down as you get older you'll eventually get hunchbacked and uh, yeah, you don't want to osteoporosis will start giving you a hump on your back. And if you're continually looking down, there's certain muscles that get tired mm -hmm. and you'll eventually get uh, back yeah. aches. And so square up your shoulders, square up your shoulders, <laughs> sit up and, and uh, you know, look around for the beauty and not for the the, for the, the mud and the, the beast, <laughs> for the beauty, not the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Papa o did a funny. Okay, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And keep the questions coming and subscribe okay, well, if you have it. Uh, and there you go, I'm square up your it. shoulders. And good night, everyone. I tend to start. I know, it keeps I start sliding us. down. Like <laughs> okay, back up, back up. Okay, yeah. Your head goes a little. Thanks, <laughs> and good night, everybody. Good night. It's been so long since we.